welcome to this video and what I want to have a look at in this video is is there a limit to how bright a star can get well actually there's something called the Eddington limit which we're going to have a look at in this video so before we do that let's just recap on main sequence stars so if you're not familiar with the HR diagram which is on the right just check the video at the top and on this HR diagram down the middle in a diagonal you have the main sequence so these are stars that are fusing hydrogen in their core to helium. And this is kind of the most stable part of their evolution. And where they sit on that main sequence is a function of their mass. So the lower mass stars sit towards the lower right and the larger stars will sit towards the upper left. And it's those upper ones that we're interested in for this particular video. And just to recap, on your y-axis is your luminosity. So as you get further up on the graph, that's how luminous they are, or how bright they are, and then their surface temperatures along the bottom. So if we have a look at the actual plot itself, there seems to be a natural limit anyway. So you've got a limit to how luminous a star can get. And this is related to this Eddington limit, which is we're going to have a look at. So stars can't get any more luminous than this particular value, because when they do, they actually kind of lose their outer layers and they, they almost destroy themselves. So they can't actually get beyond that limit. So let's just recap what hydrostatic equilibrium is. So when stars are on their main sequence, they, they're fusing hydrogen in their core, which causes this outward radiative pressure. Now that outward radiative pressure balances against the gravitational forces trying to collapse it and the star stays fairly stable for a long period of time. And that is known as hydrostatic equilibrium, where that pressure and that gravity is balanced against one another. Now, the Eddington limit is when a star is at that limit where it's in hydrostatic equilibrium. So the definition of it would be the maximum luminosity a body can attain when it is in hydrostatic equilibrium. So if you were to increase that pressure any more, then the star would actually expand and it would pretty much blow its outer layers apart. So at this limit, what starts to happen with stars is they lose their outer layers. So that outward radiative pressure from the energy generation in the core starts to lose their outer layers. And stars undergoing this or at that limit undergo a significant amount of mass loss. So it's fairly obvious to see if you, if you find one of these stars, they'll have a lot of material around them. So this just gives you an illustration of that, that this pressure, this outward radiative pressure starts to overcome that gravity. The gravity can no longer hold the star together, so it's almost blowing itself apart. Now these stars, these wolf rayet stars, um, are so luminous that they do blow these layers apart. So these, this is a couple of images from real stars that are at the Eddington limit. And you have these very bright luminous stars at the center and then their outer layers. Are being lost into space and they very quickly lose a lot of mass through this process. So what is the most luminous star found to date? Well the central star in the cluster R136 is six million times more luminous than our sun. So that is an incredible amount. Of, it was a very very luminous star and that's right at the limit, the Eddington limit, so it will be losing a lot of material um, around it and undergoing a significant amount of mass loss. So thank you for watching. And in another video, we're actually going to derive an expression for that Eddington limit so we can work out what that limit might be for a particular star.